Newton's second law states that when a non-zero net force acts on an object, the object will accelerate in the direction of the net force and the acceleration is directly proportional to the force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. So where Newton's first law explained that when the net force is equal to zero, therefore the velocity is equal to zero, Newton's second law now tells us what happens when that net force is not equal to zero. And it says that the object will accelerate. And we can see that when somebody is trying to push start a car, we know that initially when you try to push a car, there's too much friction and you can't start the car moving. But as soon as the applied force that you are applying on that car is big enough to overcome the static frictional force of that car, we know that this car now has a net force acting on it that is greater than zero, which means that this car is going to accelerate in the direction of that force. Now, by that same standard, we understand that if instead of trying to push start a car, you were trying to push start a truck that is much heavier with a greater mass, we know that you can still apply the same force. It is still possible that there would be a net force that is greater than zero, but because the mass is so much bigger, the acceleration is going to be far smaller, which is why we say that the acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass of the object, or acceleration is directly proportional to the inverse of mass of the object, which is how it's written here. The second point that it makes is that we know that if instead of one person trying to push start this car, you had two or three people trying to push start this car, meaning that the force that is applied is far greater, the applied force is greater, which means that our net force is bigger, which would then imply that the acceleration is bigger, which is why we are then able to say that this acceleration is directly proportional to the size of the force. The bigger the force is, the bigger the acceleration. This can all be summarized into the Newton's second law equation, which tells us the net force acting on an object is equal to the mass of that object multiplied by the acceleration of that object. Some common mistakes when asked for the definition for Newton's second law are to leave out the second part that explains the relationships between acceleration and mass and acceleration and force. The second common problem is to say that force is directly proportional instead of acceleration. So these underlined words are incredibly important when writing down a comprehensive definition for Newton's second law.